Okay, apologies in advance. I'm not going to be spending a huge amount of this game talking about what's actually happening in the game. Well, in the game. Sort of in the game. I feel like there's a, sh a, a massive shitstorm on the horizon in World of Tanks. Now, as a bit of sort of background, if you don't really play the game, World of Tanks is a free to play game, and obviously it's a free to play game, that means that the, the developers have to have some way, some sort of monetization strategy, I believe is the technical term. A way of basically paying the bills, paying the staff, keeping the servers running and everything else. And one of the ways in which Wargaming.net do that um, is by selling premium tanks. Now, it's not... I'm, I should kind of stress that it's not really... Um, I mean, when people, my initial sort of thought when I heard about the idea that they were selling vehicles before the that it was sort of almost like a pay-to-win kind of situation. You know, you'd you'd give Wargaming.net real money and you'd get a tank that would do really well. And the truth is, most of the premium tanks I don't feel are actually particularly overpowered. Then. They're good. They're generally speaking good vehicles. I mean, look, this is a Churchill Three. This is a Russian premium tank. Um, it's a Land Lease British one, and it's 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 all right. It's a good tank, but what it's primarily there for is to help you mitigate the grind. You get more credits. They're cheap. I think they're cheaper to repair and rearm, and you can use them to train your crew up a bit more quickly. So anyway, the existence of premium tanks doesn't particularly bother me in the game, and I think that for the most part they handle very well. But there's a thing today where, well, today, a couple of days ago now, where they say they are getting rid of some of the premium tanks, and this wouldn't be such a problem. But this normally doesn't bother me. I mean, they got rid of D25 from the premium shop. I mean, if there was a ta premium tank that I thought oh, looks a bit good. So, I don't, you know, begrudge, begrudge them that at all, that's, that's fine. Um, but one of the, the, the fact that they said they're going to get rid of is the TOG-2. The TOG-2 is the, um, it's the father Christmas of tanks, you're happy to see it. No one hates the TOG 2. And the idea that I might be living in a world where there are going to be no more TOG 2s is, is one... Is, is, I'm not sure it's a world I want to live in. The TOG 2 had... You saw a TOG 2 on your team and you were happy because it was there. And you saw a TOG 2 on the enemy team and you thought, you know, that's that's fine too. I'm happy just to see it. Knowing like, they're like pandas, knowing they're still around. Is a fundamentally good, nice thing. So what does this mean for World of Tanks? Well, okay, I'll be honest, no. Not a huge amount. Um, I'll be sad that essentially I'll be seeing fewer pure TOG2 players, fewer TOG2 drivers in the future. And who knows, maybe they'll they'll bring in some other fun, goofy looking tank. But I think it was such a it is such a unique vehicle in the game that it feels sad to see it go. No, I don't want it. I don't want it to go away. And I know that, you know, that obviously there's still going to be people driving them, there's still going to be... Penetration. ...people playing with the TOG, because, you know, they're not going to take the TOGs away from people. Bail but, I don't know, it just... It feels like there's slightly less joy and warmth in the world, knowing that this tank's been taken away. <laughs> Well, yeah, I don't know really what to say. 
I mean, I'm thinking maybe I should get a TOG 2 before they're taking a shot. I mean, maybe that's their plan. Maybe war game. Maybe I'm being sent. I mean, this is very simple now. But maybe they're, they're going to say, "Hey, we're getting rid of the TOG 2. Everyone's going to buy a TOG 2 because you know this is your last chance to get one." And then they'll be like, "Oh, actually, surprise! We're going to keep it due to overwhelming public support." I mean, that would be a very, very cheeky way of this. This game has gone very wrong. But so has so has World of Tanks until until this Tog Two situation is 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 dealt with and addressed by War Gaming. It's going to be hard to really feel anything good about anything. I mean, maybe all these tanks, these guys are just driving driving off to their deaths as a form of protest. This T1 heavy. They're, they're protesting the only way they know how, by passive resistance. Don't fight back to you on heavy. Let Wargaming know how you feel about the TOG. I mean, actually, a T1 heavy. If you've not seen the TOG, imagine like a T1 heavy, like this tank, but you stretched it out. Basically, bolted another T1 heavy on T1 heavy onto the back of it. The turret ring is damaged. We can barely turn it. Okay. Passive resistance only obviously goes so far. But. Still, the, the princi principle I feel is sound. One of our tracks is damaged. As you can also probably tell, grinding the Sherman hasn't gone particularly well. I'm still playing it. The the amount of experience required to get from tier five to six is a bit more than from tier four to five. And am I getting nostalgic and missing the grant? A little. People underestimate that tank. I underestimated that tank, and you can play with that, you know, underestimating. Uh, oh well. It's down to McNamara and the S35CA. Look at that. French, ta French tank design is... It, it looks like there's a hole in the top for you to put your foot in, and it's like some kind of designer shoe. You look at that. Oh, you're looking the wrong way. Turn, turn, turn. Shoot. Before he should shoot. Oh, that missed. Bounce even. Oh. Oh. Ah, 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 ah. 